Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, we are going to share few of the tips and tricks how you need to have a conversation when you are facing behavioral interview questions. Now, in your testing interviews, you definitely would be facing technical questions. You would be facing, you know, programming questions. But how can you deal with the behavioral interview questions? So there is a star methodology and how you can react to and what you should answer in these questions. So this video will be on that. But before that, if you're watching this video for the very first time, then don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe our channel. And I would also like to tell you about this digital product. So in this digital product, uh, it's, at a, it's available at a very nominal cost. And we have listed down 8 to 10 very frequently asked questions to the interviewers. And what would happen is when you get these questions, you would actually get blanked out. But if you will go through this digital product, you'll come to know, okay, what is the situation? What is the task? What is the action item that you need to answer? And what was the result? So in the method of star pattern, the answers have been given, right? So you would be able to understand how to answer these kind of questions from the testing perspective, right? From the QA perspective, you might get these questions online with respect to various other roles like software development, business analyst, project manager, but your role is of a QA, your role is of a testing. So how can you answer such kind of questions? So that thing is being highlighted in this particular document. It's a digital product. It's available at a very nominal cost and we have listed eight to 10 very common, frequently asked behavioral interview questions. And once you will go through these questions, definitely you would get an idea also how you need to answer other questions. And this is a product itself. So this is a product that I was just mentioning it to you. So here in the product, we have mentioned general tips to succeed in the behavioral interviews, right? And apart from that, what is a star framework? how you need to answer using the star framework, right? So how you can answer the behavioral interview questions effectively using the star method. Star stands for situation, task, action, and result, right? And uh, next is the list of questions you would get, right? So let me go through the general tips and tricks to succeed in the behavioral interviews, right? Those we will be covering in this video itself. So, the very first thing is you have to understand the star method. Now, whenever you get these kind of questions in an interview, people, even they would have worked in such real time projects, even they would have, uh, you know, worked on uh, some kind of these kind of scenarios, they would have faced these kind of situations still they are not able to answer. Why? Because they are not able to recall. But if you read this particular document, you would be able to answer those questions. You would be able to frame the answer properly. See, in an interview, it is very important that you answer the questions in a structured manner, right? So first is familiarize yourself with the star method, right? So you have to tell the answer in the form of star method, situation, task, action, and result. This will help you to provide clear and concise answers and keeps your answers focus so from from an interviewer perspective also it will be easier for them okay that this particular candidate is now going in this direction right so this should be your approach listen attentively so your listening skills are very important here you need to pay very close attention to what are the interviewers questions and what is he thinking from his mind so if you are able to understand what he is he is thinking then your answer will be matching with his expectations, his or her expectations, right? Then be concise. You have to be focused. You have to be concise, right? You have to provide the details that are very relevant to your answer. You don't have to speak up something else that becomes irrelevant to your answer. Otherwise, what would happen? You would immediately get a cross question. Ask clarifying questions. Now, many a times it happens in an interview. If you're not able to answer, right? Many a times what happens is the candidates are not understanding the interview questions and they'll directly start answering. But instead of that, what you should do is you should seek clarification. Clarification would actually help you to understand the question and then you can answer accordingly. 
avoid negative language, right? So it is very important. You are going to join their company. So you need to avoid negative language. Uh, highlight your strengths. Frame your responses in a positive light. So it is very important that uh, you are highlighting your strength with the proper data, right? Many times we'll tell that, yes, I am doing testing. I am executing test cases. I am finding out defects. But give some relevant data. Give some uh, real-time stories also so that they are able to understand your strength. Ask thoughtful questions. So interviewing is a two-way street. It's a kind of a communication that you need to put up, right? It's okay to not have answer to every question. So sometimes, you know, it happens that you get a question which is altogether a bouncer right? Or a googly, you are not able to answer. So you can tell the interviewer that I am not actually having experience. I haven't got the opportunity to work in this kind of situation. But if I would have been in this shoes, then I would have done this. I would have done this XYZ action items. Highlight you are a team player. So it is very important that rather than showing your individual contribution, you are showcasing that you are a good team player, right? And next is you need to practice. Okay. So now let's understand the STAR framework. So STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. As the keywords, as the terminology itself suggests, it is a straightforward thing, but still we'll go through one or two questions and we'll explain you what you need to answer, right? So situation is begin by describing the specific situation or context you were in. So you have to set the stage for the story. So imagine, that the interviewer is interviewing you and you might would have worked on some particular project in your company but how will they come to know so you will have to set the context for that answer first you will have to set the stage you will have to set the scenario in their mind okay you will have to explain what was the situation when did it happen why did it happen right so here from the example point of view we have taken in my previous role as a software tester at ABC company, we were working on a, on a project to improve the quality and the QA process of our e-commerce platform. So you are working on an e-commerce website and the situation was that you have to improve the quality also and the QA processes also. So let's say you got some defect with respect to non-functional testing, performance testing. So you can tell that in the situation itself that we had received some of the performance issues from the uh, you know stakeholders or from the customers right so task was you have to explain the task or challenge that you are facing right so what were your goals what were your objectives so task was to catch the non functional defects and to help the development team also to reproduce those defects so that they they can fix it and finally you can get the overall responsiveness of the website you can move it to the better speed right so you need to enhance the user's experience. So that is your task. Now, what is action? What action did you took? So to address this, this challenge, I first conducted a performance test to identify bottlenecks in the code. So maybe you went through all the pages in your application. You saw which particular screens or which particular pages are taking more time, which pages are taking less time, which pages are taking average time. We would list them down in uh, maybe our document and then you will analyze with multiple runs. So as it's a performance testing, it is it cannot be determined with just one single test cycle or one single run. So you would perform four to five runs to get some pattern. And once you get that pattern, you would be able to see, okay, yes, this particular screen is actually taking more time. So here is the bottleneck. Hey, this is the screen which, which might be giving an issue to the customer, right? So you will collaborate with your QA manager, with your QA lead, with the development team to implement code optimizations. You will uh, get code uh, minification. So code refactoring would be done, right? And uh, they, will, they will take care that such kind of delays or such kind of waits are not hampering the user. They'll get it fixed and then you will test it, right? So result. As a result of our testing and code optimization, we, we achieved a 30% reduction in the page load time and 20% improvement in overall website performance. So this is again a kind of a data, right? You can see 30%, 20%, 15%. .5. If I say, yes, website improvement uh, is there, website performance has got increased, but this is a haphazard statement, right? It got improved. It is good. 
we need to come up with the data and data is always quantified in terms of numbers right so the result is something that will push your level in an interview to the next level right so if you are playing on second level you would be moving to the third level how many of you uh, are able to recall about uh, mario game right mario game so we used to play it one level second level third level so in an interview also it is like that you have to get to the next level right so this was the result okay now i'll take one or two questions right yeah i cannot take the entire digital product questions because then uh, no one would be willing to purchase it right so let me show you this digital product so the product cost is very nominal right if you go to a restaurant right and you see what are the rates and this rate is as less as possible right so you would get 8 to 10 behavioral interview questions that we have listed why i'm telling 8 to 10 because i have also included question such as why are you looking for a change right then people will tell no that's not a behavioral question but these kind of questions you won't be able to answer it directly until unless you have some state set up in your mind okay i have to answer in this manner right you cannot tell you are always uh, trying to look up because you're not happy with your boss right you cannot tell you are not happy with the politics that has been played in the company you don't have to tell negativity you don't have to spread negativity about the company about the employer where you are working itself that is also very important so how tactfully you have to answer so those kind of things have been covered in the video itself right now let me go to the document fine so now let's take one question tell me about a time when you had to work under pressure to meet a tight deadline how did you prioritize your testing task now this the moment i complete this question everyone will be thinking yeah that's a routine thing that will happen right but how you have to appropriately answer in an interview is the key here now situation in my previous role as a software tester at a startup right why startup startup companies do uh, you know this kind of multitasking they expect from the testing team yeah okay perform testing on this project perform testing on this project okay convert auto these test cases into automation in this project okay simultaneously work here so in the startup company you would see such kind of environment right and yeah it's good for some time if you are able to handle that stress if you are able to handle that pressure it's a good thing it will help you to become a multitasking guy right there was one particular week where the demands peaked unexpectedly right now unexpectation is directly proportional to the it companies right these things do happen nothing is expected sometimes you know in the companies now task i was in the middle of testing a new feature for our main product but at the same time a critical bug was reported in another project by a client and i had previously worked on it this bug was causing significant issues for one of our key clients my task was to test both the urgent fix and the existing testing task without compromising the quality and timeline of other so this happens if you are working on a new project let's say b and earlier you had worked on project a and there is a blocker issue that the client has found in project a then as you are having product knowledge as you are having expertise of testing those things as you have already worked on those things as you are an experienced person now so you would be expected to work on multiple things right so you have to test the, you have to reproduce the steps for the development team you have to get it fixed you have to collaborate with the development team in which environment that fix is coming you have to test once that fix is there and simultaneously you have to also ensure the current sprints user story is not being impacted right so that's the key here so action i quickly assessed the situation and prioritized the task right priority would be taking a change here right then resolving the critical bug was the immediate priority due to its impact on the client i communicated this to my team lead and requested a brief pause on the feature testing i then focused on identifying and reproducing the bug and then coordinated with the development team to get it fixed then i started focusing on existing testing tasks i also stayed a couple of extra hours for the next few days to ensure i was back on track with the feature development 
with the feature development and its testing. So if it's an as dead role, yeah, with the feature development and testing, if it's a pure testing role with the feature testing. So you have to tell what action did you took. So you communicated to the team lead that there will be a pause to your current task as you are switching to the new task, right? Yes, that kind of communication you have to happen. Now you will tell, yeah, my team lead knows that this bug has come. So I am only telling. So yeah, so sir, I am already working on P0 task. The task which you are assigning, that is going to be more pr priority. So I need to switch my to that task and leave my current task. So there will be a pause on current task. So such kind of communication you have to tell. So that they will come to know and they will trust you that yes, you have worked in a real-time project. You have worked in a real-time situations. In none of the companies, these things do happen that you are working on the same task for one week, one month, two months. No. Priorities do come and you have to switch. How soon you can switch and how can you structure the uh, switch? You know, so that is the key here. Result, the quick response to the bug resulted in a minimum disruption for the client who expressed their appreciation for the prompt action. So there was a prompt action. The existing work was not impacted. The bug was also tested. The blocker issue got resolved. The current sprints user stories are also being tested properly. So the current sprints tasks are not impacted. The bugs are also fixed. So the client appreciated, right? Feature testing was completed on time. The release was planned and it was uh, released as per scheduled, right? There was a clear communication. So it was a valuable lesson that you learned in balancing urgent and important tasks in a dynamic work environment. So this is how you have to articulate such kind of answers. When you get this behavioral interview questions for the testers, right? So it becomes very important what you answer, how you answer, right? So this is a digital product that has been kept for the same and other questions are also there. So describe a situation when you found a critical bug that others had missed. How did you identify it? What steps did you take to ensure it was resolved? Why do you want to change your current company? In an application currently in production, one module of code has been modified. Is it necessary to retest the whole application or is it enough to just test the functionality associated with that module? Right. So such kind of situational, such kind of behavioral interview questions with the answers have been provided in this digital product and the product is available at a very nominal cost. So uh, don't forget to give the credit, right? Please post positive rating on TopMate. Please post a positive testimonial on TopMate for the channel. It would be great, right? And see, even if you feel you are not able to afford this particular cost, just drop an email to us at rdautomationlearning.gmail.com. We'll see what can be done. Right. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this digital product would be helpful to you to take your career to the next level. In this digital product, we have covered behavioral interview questions for testers, right? Which the testing team or which the testers or the QA software testers might get in the behavioral interview and see there are separate rounds that are done for behavioral interview questions in product-based companies such as Amazon, Microsoft, Google. So it becomes very important that you are able to answer such kind of questions. And if there are not separate rounds, then in the manager round or in the client round, you might get the kind, you might get these kind of questions, right? So it is very important that you be prepared for such kind of questions in an interviews, right? So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates.